continents rupture and sometimes form new oceans. The elongated regions where continents break up are called rifts. Rifts affect the entire lithosphere, both the crust and the uppermost mantle. This video presents some basic information about how rifts form, how they sometimes evolve to become new oceans, and how passive continental margins form as a consequence. We briefly consider four examples of rifts around the globe. The East African Rift, both eastern and western branches, the Rhinegraben of Europe, and two U.S. examples, the Basin and Range and the Rio Grande Rift. We then consider two examples of embryonic oceans, the Red Sea between Arabia and Africa, and the Gulf of California in northwest Mexico. We finish with three examples of passive continental margins, those around the Gulf of Mexico, and those around the Central Atlantic Ocean, including offshore of the eastern United States and northwest Africa. Rifting is the focus thinning of the continental lithosphere. Lithosphere is the plate of plate tectonics and rides on hot, weak asthenosphere. Continental lithosphere consists of the continental crust, typically 40 kilometers thick, and the top 100 to 200 kilometers of the upper mantle. It is often mistakenly thought that only crust thins during rifting, but the mantle lithosphere must also thin. As rifting progresses, the lithosphere thins more and more, allowing the underlying asthenosphere to rise toward the surface and melt as a result of lowering pressure by a process known as decompression melting. These magmas rise toward the surface through and erupt as lava flows. Eventually, the lithosphere ruptures completely and seafloor spreading begins. Continents rift either because the lithosphere is pulled apart or because it is weakened from below by a mantle plume. These two end member causes are called active rifts, those built over plumes, and passive rifts, those pulled apart by far field stresses. Depending on the strength of the lithosphere, continental rifts may be narrow less than 100 kilometers across, like the East African Rift. Or wide, up to 1,000 kilometers across, like the basin and range of the western U.S. Narrow rifts form in cooler regions where the lithosphere is thick and strong. And wide rifts form in warmer regions where the lithosphere is thin and weak. As extension progresses, rifts evolve from subaerial to submarine. Through this evolution, rifts are defined by downfaulted regions, robins, and uplifts, horsts, bounded by rift link highs. Depending on climate, a through going river may flow down the rift axis, as is seen for the Rhinegraben the Rio Grande Rift, and the western branch of the East African Rift. Or there may be terminal lakes with no outlet to the sea. As is seen for the eastern branch of the East African Rift and the Great Basin. Volcanic eruptions also occur during the early stages of rifting so interbedded terrigenous sediments and lava flows are common in early rift deposits. Good examples of early rift in their deposits are found in the eastern U.S., including the asymmetric half graben basins of the Newark series. These Triassic rift basins formed several tens of millions of years before seafloor spreading began to open the Atlantic Ocean 
and includes some classic igneous rock localities, such as the Palisade Sill that overlooks the Hudson River in New York City, and the Wachung Basalts of New York and New Jersey. They also contain coal deposits and lake sediments. Some rifts stop at this early stage, but others continue to widen. As extension progresses, the rifted region subsides and the sea invades, forming an embryonic ocean. At first, the seaway is narrow, and it is easy to block recharge from the larger ocean. A good example of this stage is the Red Sea, where extension has been going on for about 25 million years. The Gulf of California, where Baja California splintered away from Mexico, is another youthful example. In some cases, the embryonic ocean may repeatedly be flooded by seawater and then cut off from the sea, causing it to dry up repeatedly to form evaporite deposits such as halite and gypsum. As happened during the Jurassic opening of the Gulf of Mexico and the Miocene opening of the Red Sea. As the new ocean widens by seafloor spreading, free circulation of seawater with the larger ocean is established, ending evaporite deposition. Once an open seaway is established, normal marine sediments such as limestone and shale are deposited. The sequence of terrestrial sediment with lava, overlain by evaporites, overlain by marine sediments, is thus expected as a rift widens into an ocean. Changing sedimentation in an evolving rift is accompanied by a change in how subsidence happens. Early subsidence is controlled by faulting, and narrow grobbins are filled with sediment and lava. Later subsidence is broader, caused by cooling and thickening of the lithosphere. This is the rift-to-drift -drift transition, which is when continental rifting evolves into true seafloor spreading. Rifting may evolve rapidly to seafloor spreading, or it may evolve slowly to seafloor spreading, or it may stop suddenly and never become a new ocean. Every rift is different that way. The change in subsidence mechanism over the life of an evolving rift, from early faulting to late thermal subsidence, is because with time, the deformation and igneous activity migrates away from the original rift. In fact, this is not quite accurate. It is the two halves of the rift that migrate away from where seafloor spreading happens. These two complementary halves of the original rift subside to become passive continental margins, with an actively spreading mid-ocean ridge between them. Seafloor spreading turns the original one plate into two plates. Once seafloor spreading begins, the two halves of the original rift subside to become passive continental margins. The two complementary passive margins become part of the interiors of the two new plates and are increasingly separated with time. Two good examples can be seen in the passive margins of the eastern United States and northwest Africa, which once were part of a single rift but which were separated beginning in Jurassic time. Today, the two sides of the Triassic-Jurassic Rift are separated by the Atlantic Ocean. Each half has part of the buried rift overlain by the rift sequence. Terrestrial sediments and lava, evaporites and marine sediments. Passive continental margins contrast with active margins like transform faults, where two plates slide past each other, or convergent plate boundaries, where one plate subducts beneath another. Instead, passive continental margins lie in the interior of plates but are nevertheless important because they are boundaries between continental and oceanic crust. Because great rivers flow from continental interiors to the sea, passive continental margins are where most sediment is deposited. Important cities have grown up where great rivers flow into the sea. For example, New York City, Houston, London, Mumbai, Hong Kong. Shanghai, and Amsterdam, and much of the world's population lives on passive continental margins. 
These huge piles of sediment also host important deposits of oil and natural gas. We hope this brief overview of continental rifts, young oceans, and passive continental margins and how these are related has been informative. Keep some of these concepts in mind the next time you enjoy a day at the beach. The wide beaches like those of Texas and Florida are most people's favorite experiences with passive margins.